Hello, I'm the Happy Jar, and welcome to an analysis on the LEGO Star Wars Rogue One sets. Uh, these leaked off Amazon Italy, I think it was, uh, one or two weeks ago now. Uh, but uh, as expected, just like the Force Awakens sets, LEGO took, took all the photos down as soon as they could. Even though Amazon Italy is a more official thing, and they said they recognised that, uh, they still uh, don't want the photos to leak. Uh, because it's like the Force Friday thing from uh, last year where Disney do not want people to see all the merch until it's announced on that day. So people can't plan out what they're going to buy and instead just buy everything they see on the shelves so they make more money. So it's like that. But against my better judgement, uh, I'm going to make an analysis on this video anyway because last year I didn't get taken down. And also no one else has done one. And uh, I want you guys to see the pictures. Sorry, did I say you guys? I meant the views. <laughs> Starting off with the Imperial Assault Hover Tank, uh, this set sort of just looks like a, uh, just a pile of junk. That's what I thought uh, the vehicle looked like in the trailers, and that's what I think it looks like here. Some people have liked it, but for the most part I think a lot of people don't really care for it. I mean, in Star Wars every vehicle has like such an iconic shape to it, like you could just draw a stick outline of any vehicle in Star Wars and people would be able to tell you what it is. But this is just like a big metal slab with greebling on it and uh, yeah, not, not my cup of tea. I, I feel like the uh, Empire usually have a bit more of a uh, visual style than this. Uh, I'm surprised this gets past customs but you know, comes with uh, Chirrut Imwei who looks like an awesome character. Uh, the blind dude that um, doesn't have the force but like worships the force and follows it like a religion sort of thing. So he looks really cool. Uh, and these new troopers just look sort of okay. And uh, not the biggest fan of them really. And also after Rogue One becomes irrelevant these characters will just look out of place in any like a New Hope mock or original trilogy mock so yeah and don't care for this set personally. <laughs> Next we have the ATST Walker. I think it's about time we got another one of these, especially in this like an individual set because they've only been coming with like Battle of Endor sets uh, the last few years. That's the last one I got, uh, and this does look uh, really nice. Like it looks good. I think it's very similar to the, if not identical to the design they used in the Force Awakens game. Uh, but the legs look a little chunky, though it's very difficult to get them like as slender as they are in the movies without like uh, bypassing Lego guidelines of structural integrity and stuff and uh, play value. Uh, I do like the minifigures a bit more in this one. Uh, Baze looks like another awesome character. He's like Chirrut's uh, BFF. And you get just a generic Rebel Trooper man that he could be used as any old civilian. And you get an ATST driver who, interestingly, has uh, the goggles printed on his helmet, which is uh, something that I always felt like was missing. And so that's quite cool. And he also has an alternate face uh, with goggles as well, I believe. So that's pretty cool. Uh, just a walker isn't a set I really need, though. So uh, I'm not interested in it personally. But if you don't have a walker, like I'm sure a lot of new audiences won't come into Star Wars recently. Uh, then this looks like looks like a good walker. Looks like a good chicken. Now we're getting on to the more interesting stuff. Uh, this is the brand new Tie Striker. Uh, they revealed this ship at Comic Con, I believe it was, where they had a little model of it, uh, and it's really cool looking. I think it looks very sleek, and they use the new Tie window design which is getting a lot of use out of it. Uh, I don't really care for the figures in this one. Like, uh, you sh I, the reason I keep mentioning the figures is usually they're a big draw to an expensive LEGO set like this. Uh, but the figures just don't really do it to me. Again, the Shore Troopers, same as the ones from the Hover Tank, it's like they're going to be irrelevant and they're not useful for anything outside of Rogue One. I do like the colours on the Shore Trooper though. I think they look nice. I uh, don't really care for them, but the design itself is interesting. Like, rather than the cockpit just being like a bubble shape like it traditionally is, it's extended. 
which is uh, kind of weird. It looks like there's a walkie-talkie piece with what looks to be a sticker on it. It's a cool design, uh, but it'll probably be super overpriced if it's anything like the uh, first order tie. Uh, it's got some back space back there. And uh, again, uh, not something I'm really interested in. I I'll just save myself the trouble and say I'm not really interested in any of these Rogue One sets personally. Uh, I do I do like the way the wings are designed on this one though. Like, that was cool, like uh, the spurs across the wings are done with tiles, which is quite unique for this particular tie set. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I know uh, my last video was a review of the classic TIE Fighters, and as I said now, a lot of people love to collect LEGO TIEs, so uh, that's all good for their collection. Next we have the U-Wing, which is probably the most popular new vehicle design at the moment after it was announced uh, just before the release of the trailer. And uh, I feel like this ship makes a lot of sense, I always thought it was weird in the original trilogy films how uh, like the Rebels ne never really had like just a soldier troop carrier that could land on the ground like the Republic gunships or uh, the landing crafts. So this makes a lot of sense in-universe, I can see why we didn't see it in the original trilogy because uh, there wasn't any proper, like, rebel land battles uh, like there are on this film. I do worry about how much space there is underneath. Like, we've seen a lot of that, uh, the interior of that underneath area in all the trailers and stuff. Uh, but it looks very tacked on. Uh, like, it just looks like a grey box has just been attached with studs to the bottom. Uh, maybe in person uh, it'll look a bit better, but just from box out, I'm not really a huge fan. The design itself I do quite like. Uh, but the, the colours on the set, um, it's just it's not not really uh, not really doing it for me. But this has probably uh, one of my favourite minifigure selections in it. We get uh, the main character Jin herself, who looks terrible. <laughs> I mean, uh, the hat's a new piece, but like, why why is she wearing like a weird poncho that we haven't seen uh, in any of any of the trailer footage yet? But also, like, she just has plain black pants, and yeah, that, that figure looks a bit rubbish. They don't even have a decent shot of her on the box! I mean, come on, this is your main character! It looks like her hair is attached to the hat, uh, which we saw her, her wearing that poster thing. Uh, so we're not going to get a separate hair piece, I guess, for the official Jin or so protagonist of the film figure. Like, what? Did Lego not know? Uh, but we also get the Space Monkey Man. What's his name? Uh, Bastion, I think it is. Not Bastion from Overwatch, but Bastion. And uh, we saw him in the trailer and uh, the behind the scenes thing that they showed like four times at Star Wars Celebration and it was a bit awkward. Uh, but yeah, that figure looks cool, if a bit oversized. Uh, and then we get a generic Rebel Trooper, which I always good to get. A nice looking uh, Rebel Pilot. And then also uh, Cassian, who's another one of the uh, main crew. Uh, so, yeah, re really good minifig selection. I probably will get this one, similar to the first order Transporter, where I just got it when it was on sale, and I sort of fall in love with it. Because uh, from the box there, everyone thought, oh, that looks really weird. But it, by the end of it, I think a lot of people agreed that was one of the best uh, that the Force Awakens we've had to offer. So, hopefully this will be a similar deal. And last, but certainly not least for a lot of people, is the uh, Krennix Imperial Shuttle, uh, which is a very interesting design, and uh, just as far as the build itself, I think is very admirable to pull off those sort of angles in LEGO. And it looks like, uh, through the box, it works really well, so in person, uh, hopefully it translates to looking that good as well. It's very smooth, very sleek, very evil, uh, so that's quite cool. Uh, we minifigure wise we get K2SO which rounds off like the main squad uh, he's sort of the C3PO character for this film uh, we get the other guy sorry uh, this guy rounds off the squad I can't remember the character's name and I can't quite make it out here but he's from the four lines is that Boon Roon? is that his name? <laughs> Boon Roon if his name is Boon Roon then he'll be my favourite character ever Boon Roon fantastic uh, also Pad don't, don't know who he is, I don't know if you've seen him in the trailer. Uh, Krennic himself, who has his super uh, swagalicious cape. And then uh, the Death Troopers, which have been a very anticipated figure. Uh, we got uh, the big picture of him, uh, of them on all the box art. 
And we also got a leaked picture of a close-up a close of the figure uh, just a few days ago. And uh, the helmet, I think, looks awesome. I love the green printing for the lights on there. The helmet just looks super cool. But the torso printing is really awkward looking for me, uh, to me, because you got the nice pauldron, but the print itself, it's just grey lines on black and it looks super messy and just super, I don't know if tacky is the right word, but yeah, the torso print looks awful to me. You also got like those three tubes there, which look like he's got chocolate bars shoved in his pants as he steals them from the convenience store or something, because uh, it's just cut off by the printing. I do like that belt printing, that's a very imperial looking belt buckle. Uh, but yeah, the to torso just looks super messy to me and uh, I think it could have just used more colour and depth because just grey lines just drawn all over this thing, it looks like a bad custom uh, to me. So yes, not overly fond of uh, that, but again, the, the helmet looks super cool. Uh, the Rogue One sets uh, overall, again. Not not really grabbing my interest with any of them. Uh, I, I was sort of glad of this because I was hoping to save my money um, for the new Death Star, but we all know how that turned out by this point. Uh, I don't want to talk about it too much, I'll throw pictures up of it, uh, but it leaked recently uh, from uh, when it arrived at Lego stores. Uh, some guy took a picture of the number and teases all with that. And then later he just showed like the full front of the box. I don't know if the same person or not, but it looked like it was taken from a Lego store employee. Uh, and yeah, it's just a remake of the other one. And from someone who never liked the design of the old one, I am very disappointed uh, that this is just a straight up remake of it. And I get why they did it. Again, don't want to talk about it too much because I want to make a separate video on it and I don't want to get rid of potential material. Just like the design looks so dated. And I can't, uh, can't believe Lego thought uh, it, this looked okay. Like, this would look good on shelves next to the TIE Striker or um, the, the UCS Slave 1. Like, it's going to look awful. It, it, even the box art is just super ugly. Like, they, uh, after I found out that it was just leaks, I was at least looking forward to uh, how gorgeous the box art would be. But sure enough, it looked uh, super ugly and terrible. And that's it for the Rogue One sets. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, let me know what you think of these sets. As I said, not, none of them really tickle my fancy, but that's fine. Saves money for other stuff. Uh, though I can see a lot of people really liking these, especially newer Star Wars fans, uh, Lego Star Wars fans. Uh, and who knows, maybe after the film my opinion would have changed on some of these sets, and I might want to get them. Uh, apologies for any clicking in this video, that's just me clicking through the photos. And also if I was talking too fast, like just in hindsight, it seems like I was talking really fast. So apologies for that. But uh, leave a comment what you thought of the video, what you think of the text. I'll really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Darth Vader, but not just any normal Darth Vader. Light up lightsaber Darth Vader. That's pretty cool.